Hey guys, so how's everyone doing? I hope you're well. Um, by now, you've probably seen a couple videos on this, and hell, you may be tired of seeing it. Um, but this one's going to be better, I promise. Um, we're going to do some hot rodding. I'm not going to tear it down and port it. Um, not right now anyway, but you know, that could be something we do in the future when we're really, 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 really bored if we don't sell it or trade it off by then. But um, anyway, with that said, um, I've run the saw. It, it's, you know, it's stock 35cc saw. Um, 14 inch full comp, full chisel chain is uh, a whole lot for it. <laughs> if that tells you anything, you kind of got to have, you, you've kind of got to milk it through, like, say, a 10 inch piece of poplar. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that'll give you an idea of what we're working with. But uh, I'm going to make a couple test cuts. We're going to video it um, in bone stock form. There's nothing been modified other than an aftermarket carb. And, really not a modification um things probably still got the muffler screen in it i have no idea um but what we'll do we'll get her warmed up um i've already run it a little bit so it's still warm um make us two try to make two good clean cuts without making them crooked <laughs> i'm about the world's worst at cutting a straight line but i think a lot of it's the way i've got that log mounted up in that stand um the stand itself's kind of settled in and a little crooked and i've got a a piece of wood screwed down on the front of it to try to straighten up the angle of it and it's just we need to build a, a nicer stand if we're going to keep doing this and i've really really got to get the cookies and pile them all up because i plan on burning them over here in the building next door this fall so uh I've got so much stuff going on, um, to be honest with you, the last thing I need to be doing is this, but I figured it'd be fun. Um, what we're going to do, we'll make those cuts, and you know, I'll time them in the movie editor, it times down to like the hundred, to a hundredth or a thousandth of a second, it's pretty dang accurate, frame by frame. I try to shoot everything in HD so we can do that. Um, it's honestly something I've done for the last few years, but uh, just didn't start showing it to here recently. You know, you all have heard me mention that I do timed cuts. Um, I've done it on chain angles and everything here in the grinder. It just, you know, it's just something I like to do. It's kind of like my dyno. Um, I have background in drag racing. You know, it was kind of a deal. You do a mod to your car and, uh, you know, we're... Uh, change the tune up on the car and see if it knocked any et off the time but uh kind of the same deal here i guess but um <laughs> it's a lot less expensive we'll put it that way but what we're gonna do we'll get those times we're gonna come in and see if there's just a simple muffler mod that anyone could do to this sauce probably gonna be as simple as just putting a fish gill in it somewhere maybe even just drilling some holes somewhere but we'll figure something out um Anything would probably be better than what it is now. It just seems really, really restrictive. Muffler gets super hot. Um, then we're going to pull our cover off, and I'll show you guys how to do that. I'm sure this thing has a keyed flywheel, meaning the key itself is cast into the flywheel. Um, I've got some little small micro files. We'll just shave a little off of the front side of the key and advance our time on a couple of degrees. Some saws like it, others don't. Um, but most of these newer, small, modern saws are going to gain from it. But uh, I'll take you guys around back, and we'll, we'll knock a couple cookies off the log and get our initial test cuts, and then, you know, see if it's an improvement or not, I guess. Alright guys, we got our test cuts. It was, you know, both really clean cuts. Uh, as far as pressure on the saw, there's no putting any pressure on the saw. It's just uh, on those where I went in kind of full send, it was able to actually pull itself all the way through the test log on some of the first ones. 
Um, I kind of started just off idle and it uh, didn't really care for that a whole lot. But uh, it's, I'm going to start with the uh, actual time on advance first and let the muffler cool off. And we've got, I'm assuming, four screws in it holding the cover on. Or at least ways I think so. One down here, and I know my gun's blocking you guys. Wow, that thing let loose. Hopefully the flywheel comes off with these. ways I hope so. Yeah I may have took a screw out that didn't have to come out. Not really paying real close attention but that one don't need to come out. We can put it back in for the handlebar. The chain brake handle rather. My mistake. You know on most saws we're used to taking that out but there's one right in here. Just don't know any way of looking right at it. Now we ought to be ready to pull off. It's kind of funny, every other Husky saw has hex bits. And a lot of these uh, smaller ones um, have, it's like, a, I think it's a T25 Torx. Don't quote me on that, I could be wrong, but it's right below your T27 on, a, on one of these things. I got a good deal on those actually, my wife picked them up, it had metric and standard hex and uh, Torx, they, they're 3 8 drive, but I uh, had them at Walmart, it's like 10 bucks for all three sets, and uh, that's kind of hard to beat in my opinion, um, they are the hyper tough brand, and that looks like it's a half inch, I'm going to pause you guys, it's in my other toolbox. I actually had a quarter inch drive laying here in this box. We'll see if this will break it loose. Pretty easy, really. Um, see if I can figure out the best, easiest way to get that out of there. I don't really want to beat the crap out of it, but it's looking like this is one we're going to have to pick on to get off. Now, if we can find a hammer laying here amongst all of this stuff. This is one that the dang starter pulls. There we go. Usually don't take a lot. I mean, don't beat the mortal living shit out of it, but uh, usually doesn't take a lot to get those things off. I have seen some that I had to freaking heat with a torch around the center of the flywheel to get the pop off with even some sort of puller put on it um, like your old mat like a 250s and 300s or any of those um, actually any of those old saws that have that big flywheel and have the yeah, like, I guess like a watered down cart motor in them is what you can call it um, they can freaking be a nightmare to get off sometimes, but other ones will just pop right off. It's, it's just one of those deals, I guess. Um, and if you're doing that, you want to pick on that side of it. I'm not going to say it would damage it by picking on the magnet side, but I don't know. It just seems like it would make more sense to not beat on the magnets. But let's see if I can uh, give you guys a look here at the key. Um, we're going to fall on this side of the key. What this will do when we get it back on the saw engine rotation is this way. That's going to give us the ability just to clock it a little bit. And this one may have some slop in it. Some do. That one actually has quite a bit of slop in it already. So, uh, but who knows where it was set at. It actually has a lot of slop in it. Um, so uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to file just the least little bit off of it. And uh, 
Right, let me pause you guys and get my files and show you what I'm going to use. It's just like a set of micro files. You can pick them up at any tool store. Um, like I said, what we'll do is, uh, and this will work on about any saw that has this style of key. If it has a key that half moon key or woodruff key, it goes in the flywheel. It's basically the same concept. You could pull it out and do it on something flat, but a lot of the times I'll just file it right in the saw and blow everything out. You know, your seal is going to keep it from getting anything back in there and you're not really falling that much away anyway, but, um, you know, to each their own, however you want to do it, I guess. But uh, I have pulled them out of the saw and just set them against a flat file on a table and done that. But uh, what we'll do is just get that file against that. Just take a little off of it. it doesn't take a lot that's a pretty aggressive little foul we'll take our air hose blow it out make sure there's nothing there and then what we'll do that gave us quite a bit more slop um, we pause you guys and put my files up and we'll come back and zip it back on all right, so we have our uh, washer and nut that we removed. That washer is kind of beveled. You're going to put the bevel down. That should be kind of common knowledge, I guess. Um, got our nut. It is a poly lock. That's a good thing. I always try to at least put blue Loctite on flywheel nuts. Um, it probably ain't really needed or necessary, but... Um, just seems like it would be, you know, good, safe, simple insurance. Um, but with that said, I shown, you know, we got our slop. We did pick up quite a bit more. So realistically, if we had a degree wheel on there, right there would be stock timing. And I hope you guys can see that. Um, we're probably moving that thing a better part of four or five degrees, which is fine. Most of these things are timed really lazy anyway. Um, there is advance in the coil itself once the saw revs it'll you know it'll throw some advance at it itself but it'd be best to do this the piston stop in but i've kind of got it on compression i'm holding against it tight and we got our zip down um and someone may wonder well how do i know if i've went too far um if the saw's got a misfire and it's popping through the exhaust in the cut Ignition time on probably too high um, And you know if you're retarding the time on some sometimes in some cases some two strokes like a little bit of retard on the time on something with a lot of compression um, You know you may benefit from retarding the time on a little bit um, I will tell you that advancing the time on can take away from really high rpm uh, timing um, and retarding it can cause one to, you know, pull higher up top. It may make sense to somebody, it may not, but uh, in this case, you know, it's it's just a, you know, it's a low compression stock saw. Um, we're going to advance the timing on it, but uh, let's see, we'll get our starter cover. Um, I'm actually pretty clean inside. We're going to get that back on. Pull on your rope a little bit to get it to fall into place. Get us some screws started in it. This video will probably be longer than it needs to be for what we're doing, to be honest. But, you know, whatever it is, what it is. Some of you guys say you really like the longer videos. Sometimes I like to sit and watch a longer video, just all depending on what it is whether it's boring or not and i'm sure showing this cover going back on is just boring as shit um, and i don't recommend anybody zip their screws back down to an impact but i've used this thing enough for now to kind of know where it's at and what it's doing i really like these because i have the light on them 
There we have it. There's time on advance. That thing could probably use a little oil in it. But now what I'm going to do, I guess, is uh, we might be able to get the muffler off there. Um, I'm thinking that's a 10 millimeter, so I'm going to have to dig around to find something to get that out. All right, guys. It's a 10 millimeter. Pretty easy to find. I had it just sitting over there. Don't want to lose that. Put it in their little magnetic tray. I love those little trays. I've got them hanging and sitting everywhere. No, no screen in it. But um, what in the hell kind of design muffler is that? Get a light down. Exactly how that thing feeds. Hell, the exhaust gases come out past the bolts or the bolt holes. Is that even possible? Um, I'm not seeing any other passageways anywhere. That's kind of kind of odd. Um, yeah, let's see if we can find something to take those out. I'm willing to bet that they are a hex. I highly doubt with the muffler bolts or torques. Um, but you never know. My guess is going to be right here. And that is actually a really loose fit. It is possible there could be a Torx, I guess. Um, I've got the other one laying right here that I've kind of cut the end off of to do cylinder head bolts. That's a really loose fit. I wouldn't think that thing would have Torx in the muffler. I know that's way too big. Yeah. All right, let me pause you guys and see if we can find something to fit that. I'll bring you back once we find out. So with all your torques. They've honestly never been out, I don't think. I've not looked at a tag or anything, but I'm sure that these, uh, smaller saws like this or I don't know if they're even made in Sweden I have no idea somebody will know out there I know though I don't even think there's a tag on the front of the saw like the others um, no if there is it's probably over here under the clutch cover who knows Now I'm kind of up in the air and curious exactly what we're even going to be able to do for a muffler mod. Um, not a bad looking exhaust port to be honest with you. Um, it is really similar to what those old uh, Polans have but it don't have the sleeve in it. It's Stratos saw. Um. All right, guys. Um, <laughs> that is all she has to breathe out of. Is one just like it on the bottom, just that little slither you're looking at. Um, it does have that big restrictive baffle inside that you know most of these small homeowner saws have. Um, my game plan, I've got my new Matic grinder, and that's what I like to use when I'm cutting on metal. I've had some problems with the shaft on the Fordham snapping, and um, that little setup on the Dremel just seems to get super red hot if you're kind of working it that hard. But um, with that said, we're going to go in and cut a big portion out of the floor of that, um, and then... I said I wanted to just keep it simple. What we'll do is go in with the Dremel and open these up as much as we can. Um, I'll probably try to bend them up first and then, you know, open them up as much as we can. Um, if a man had a small deflector, you could, you know, punch a hole here in the bottom and screw or tack weld it on. 
riveted on whatever you wanted to do and you know that would be great too but i'd kind of like to leave this just kind of look just kind of stock looking if that makes any sense it's not really going to be a sleeper saw or anything because it's still not going to be anything to brag about once we're done here but uh this should help get some of the gases out of this muffler um you know if not whatever it is what it is we tried um but once i get this done i'll bring you guys back and show you more then that should be pretty self-explanatory we cut a big portion of that baffle out of the bottom almost all of it these inserts just slide in and out for the bolts of course they'll go back in but may look a little barbaric but uh it'll work um should breathe a lot better should sound a lot better it'll sound better if anything but is actually the edit restricted here and here <laughs> We ground all that down smooth and it actually had a lip here restricting it and we cut all that out. Kind of crazy um, how much they choke these up. And you know, if you're somewhere where you had to run a screen, there should be a screen here behind this. You could actually even put your screen back in and you know, it still be a better flowing muffler. So uh, I'm not gonna video putting it back on just to save time for the video. Um, when I get it fired up, and I'm sure we'll have to dial it back in, um, I'll bring you guys back then. All right, guys, now on these, you do have to have a spline screwdriver. I was really surprised that that aftermarket carb had those because they usually just go to a flathead on the aftermarket ones. Um, very highly doubted it needed to purge bulb push, but it's probably gonna need a choke. <laughs> Well, let's hide it. Well. See a lot of guys do that on the old max and um you know some saws just do not like a lean tune um some of the max i've seen pick up rpm with tack on them by actually fattening it up um i went in really really lean until it just fell on its face and then backed it way back out till it got pig rich hopefully you could hear it in the video and then we, you know, just found that sweet spot. Um, if I pulled a tack out and put on it, but uh, I'm pretty sure I'd have to pull the cover even with the wireless one I've got. But for my wired tack, I'd have to pull the cover. And, you know, I just don't see much of a point in it. But, you know, I would say that's tuned pretty good. Um, we'll see how it starts back. <laughs> I will tell you, it does have a little more throttle response than it had, but uh, the real test is going to be out here in the logs. So uh, hopefully I can bring you guys back and, you know, we shaved a little bit of time off of it.
all right guys we're gonna call that a win-win situation um which you know you can see how restrictive that dang muffler was just super choked down um but you know it, it still ain't nothing impressive but evidently it liked the muffler mod in the time in advance um it's a lot cleaner in the cut and pulls a lot better and um was like 2.2 seconds faster through the same piece of wood so that's you know roughly a 20 percent increase it was actually more like 21 percent when i done the math but uh yeah we'll call that a win on this and you know don't expect to get that on every saw it's just not going to happen you know if you've got this saw with the muffler yeah you should get a similar gain um but you know just to clear that up you're not going to get that gain on every saw usually you know 10 percent maybe 15 on a muffler mod in a time in advance but you know some saws respond to stuff better than others but uh you know we may tear it down do a full-blown port job on it and it only pick up five or ten percent you know it's possible it happens but uh i highly doubt doing that anytime soon probably just leave it as is leave it be uh, who knows if i'll even keep it but uh anyway with that said um thank you guys for watching you know maybe this helps someone um maybe it's entertaining to someone but you know as always uh you guys stay safe have a good one